I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on mechanics. We are going to discuss some challenge questions from past test papers. The questions have been selected by my student, Amy. Just as Amy, you can also learn from me. Feel free to contact me on the address given. Now, let us take a very important question from Pearson at Excel GCE, A-level mathematics, practice paper, mechanics, moments. The question number 13 is, right before you, let's read the question first. A uniform rod AB, which is shown here, of mass 5 kg and length 8 meters, has its end B resting on the rough horizontal ground. The rod is held in limiting equilibrium at an angle alpha to the horizontal, where tan alpha equals to 3 over 4, by a rope attached to the rod at C. The distance AC equals to 1 meter. The rope is in the same vertical plane as the rod. The angle between the rope and the rod is beta, and the tension in the rope is T newtons, as shown in the figure 10. The coefficient of friction between the rod and the ground is 2 over 3. The vertical component of the force exerted on the rod at B by the ground is R newtons. Find the value of R and part B is find the size of the angle beta. So I hope the question is absolutely clear. Now let's try to understand how do we solve this particular question. That's a very important question from test point of view as the coefficient of friction is also given to us and we need to use this to solve the problem. Now let's see how do we get into it. Let's read the question once again and then label our diagram. A uniform mass, uniform rod AB of mass 5 kg. So, uniform means the mass is right at the center. So, we can now say that this rod is given to us which is 8 meters long. So, from either side, 4 meters will be the position of the center. And at that center, we have a mass acting, which is acting in the downward direction, 5 kg. So, it is going to exert a force of 5 g newtons, correct? Now, A uniform rod AB of mass 5 kg and length 8 meters. So, this total length is 8 meters. So, 1 and 7 has its ends B resting on the rough horizontal ground. The rod is held in the limiting equilibrium at an angle of alpha, where tan alpha is 3 by 4. So, when we say tan alpha is 3 by 4, it means what? So, let us sketch this particular diagram and we can find the value sine and cosine alpha also from here. So, tan is 3 by 4. So, that is a right angle triangle and the other side is going to be 5 which is 3 square plus 4 square square root. Correct? Hi, Pythagorean theorem. So, from here we get the value of sine alpha which is 3 by 5 and we also get the value of cos alpha which is 4 over 5, correct? So, where tan alpha is 3 by 4 by a rope attached to the rod at C. So, that is the rope attached at C. The distance AC is 1 meters as shown here. The rope is in the same vertical plane as the rod. The angle between the rope and the rod is beta and the tension in the rope is T newtons as shown in the figure 10. The coefficient of friction between the rod and the ground is 
2 over 3. So, we are given the value of coefficient friction mu which is 2 over 3. The vertical component of the force exerted on the rod at B by the ground is R. So, the vertical component of the force will be like this and that is R for us. Find the value of R. Okay. So, we have kind of placed all the information on the figure. Now, if the rod is in this direction, then it is going to slide where? So, rod is going to slide in this direction. So, the force will now be acting on this side. Since it is in equilibrium, there is an equal and opposite frictional force which is acting to it and that frictional force horizontally will be acting in this direction whose value is going to be mu times r. And mu is given to us as 2 by 3. So, this force is equal to 2 by 3 of r. Is that clear to you? So, we have from here derived one relation and that is if you look into the horizontal forces, in that case F is equal to mu r which is 2 by 3 r, correct? So, we get one equation. I label this as equation 1. Now, since we need to find the value of r itself, so the unknowns here is also the tension and the angle. So, let us find the moments about point C, right? So, so in the next part, what we should do is we should find moments about point C. So, okay. So, let us do moments at C. So, moments at C are because of uh, forces acting the mass of the rod itself, right? The reaction here and this particular force F. Now, as far as the mass is concerned, this mass acting at the point C will provide a clockwise moment, right? So, this will help in moving in the clockwise direction. The reaction which is upwards will actually have a counterclockwise moment and the force here will also have a counterclockwise moment, correct? So, since they are in equilibrium, then the moments which are clockwise should be equal to the moments which are counterclockwise, correct? So, that is very important. And what is moment? We know moment is force times distance, right? So, we know moment is force times distance. Distance is the shortest distance, remember that part. Okay. So, because of the mass itself, what is the distance between the two? Let us figure this out. So, if you want to see this, then the distance is how much? It is the horizontal distance, correct? So, we have to work out this particular distance. Now, this mass is at the center, total rod length being 8. So, that means this portion is 4, right? So, out of the remaining 4, that is 3 and this is 1. So, 3 meters and 4 meters. Now, the distance is the horizontal distance, which is this particular distance and that should be the cosine value of hypotenuse 3. So, this distance is 3 cos of the angle and this angle here is same as the angle alpha, right? So, cos of alpha. So, that be becomes the distance between the vertical components, right? The mass which acts vertically downwards causing clockwise moment. So, I can write this as 5 g is the force and the distance being 3 cos of alpha. That should be equal to 
the counterclockwise moment and there are two counterclockwise moments here. One is because of R, the other one is because of the force itself. So, because of R, let me use a different ink so that we can clearly work on this. Now, because of R, it is acting vertically, right? So, therefore, again, we have to look for the horizontal distance. So, if you look at this particular point, then the horizontal distance from R is this much, correct? So, that is R times the total distance here is 4 plus 3, 7. So, it is 7 cos alpha, right? Now, let us look into the third component, which is in our case the force. Now, force F is acting horizontally. So, this force is acting horizontally and therefore, we could assume this force to be at this particular point, correct? So, the horizontal distance, horizontal force acting will give you this distance, which is vertical between C and F. Looking into the big triangle, this is 7 sine of alpha, right? So, we can add this as force times 7 sine of alpha. Is this equation clear to you? Let us call this as our equation number 2. Perfect. Now, we know the value of sine and cosine alpha, which we found here. And we know that the force itself can be written in terms of R from equation number 1. So, let us uh, write down these values. So, now we have 5G times 3 times cos alpha, which is 4 over 5 equals to R times 7 times cos alpha, which is 4 over 5 plus F. Now, F can be written as two third of R. And then we have sin alpha, which is 3 over 5. So, we have an equation in which the only unknown is R, and we can now find the value of R, correct? Let us simplify this part. So, we see that 5 cancels with 5, and let us simplify. And so, what we get on the left hand side is 12G equals 2. We can take R common on the right hand side, and we have 7 times 4, 28 over 5 plus 3 and 3 cancel, 2 over 5. So, now we can write this as 12G equals to R. 28 plus 230 and plus uh, 2, 30 over 5, which is 6 R. And therefore, the value of R is what? We can now write down the value of R as 12 G divided by 6 is equal to R. So, R is equals to 12 times 9.81 divided by 6. So, let us calculate this value. So, we have 12 times 9.81 divided by which is 19.62. So, we get the value 
of R as 19.62 newtons. So, that is how we can actually find the value of R. So, I hope this part is absolutely clear. So, let me summarize what we did here. We basically label the whole diagram and from where knowing that tan alpha is 3 by 4, we found the values of sine and cosine alpha. Now, reaction was given to us as R at the point B. The coefficient of friction is mu and therefore, the resistance because of the friction will be mu R. We are also given here that coefficient of friction mu is 2 by 3. So, that gave us the value of friction which is equal to the force F acting at this particular point B. Now, equating the moments at C, the clockwise and the counterclockwise moment should be exactly same since the body is in equilibrium. Clockwise moment is due to the weight of the rod and so that is 5 g newtons times the distance of 3 cos alpha meters. The counterclockwise moments are because of the reaction and the force. Reaction R is acting at a distance of horizontal distance of 7 cos alpha and the force is acting at a distance of 7 sin alpha. So, those become the counterclockwise moments equating the two and then calculating our answer we got that R is twice G right. So, it is approximately the exact value here is 2 G right. So, so, when we multiply with 9.81 as the approximate value taken, we get 19.62, which can be rounded to three significant figures as 19.6 newtons, right. So, that is how we can find the value of R. So, I hope the steps are absolutely clear. Now, to find the angle, what you should do? So, I leave this as an exercise for the students. The idea here is that you already know the forces, right? R and the forces. Now, what you could do is at this particular moment, you can find the moments about point B and work it out. So, I hope that makes sense. So, with that, the solution of this question part A is absolutely clear, I hope. And now, you have to think about part B and solve it. In case there is any questions or you need my help, you can always contact me on my email address. I hope you understand and appreciate it. Thanks for your time and all the best.